Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner, uh, covering section 5.13, the second part, which talks about surface and volume currents. Um, if, you, if I go too fast, you can rewind. If you have questions, video response, or comments below, uh, be sure to like and share with your friends. So um, when charge flows over a surface, let's draw a strange, doesn't matter what the shape is, what we can do is we can cut out a ribbon, an arbitrary ribbon, it doesn't really matter, okay? And this ribbon has a width of dl in the perpendicular direction to the current flow. Okay, so the current is going to flow along this path. Boop, 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 boop. So if the current flowing across this ribbon is di, so it's part of the total surface current, it's just a small infinitesimal slice, then our k vector, the surface current, is just given by di over the oh, perpendicular vector. Okay. Um, another way to look at it is let's say we had some surface, blue, 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 blue. I could have used the same surface, and then we have some patch. Okay. And this patch has a surface charge density of sigma, and at every moment in time, it is moving. You know, whatever direction and. The, the rule is, of course, that the surface charge isn't going to accumulate or anything like that. So we can also express that as the surface charge density at that point times the velocity at that point. Okay. Um, did we mention magnetostatics yet? Um, no, we haven't. But this will be important that we we we're thinking about you know, well, we'll talk about that in a minute in, in a couple sections. Um, the magnetic force on a surface on a surface current is equal to the integral sigma dA, uh, sigma dA, that's the amount of charge there, that's charge, times the velocity of that charge crossed with the magnetic field, which can be rewritten as well, k is sigma v, so we take that sigma v, so we have k vector, cross b, and what's left over is the dA, okay? So we just go across the surface and add up all the sigmas and the directions they're moving, we get that's a k at each point, okay? And we can calculate the magnetic force there. For volume currents, we have some arbitrary volume, and then we're going to take an area it's perpendicular to the surface, the current flow. So this is dA perp. Perp. Okay. And there's a certain amount of current, I, dI, flowing through there. So. And then we calculate the J vector. And that's equal to dI vector divided by the volume perpendicular to that motion. Okay. Um, so. Um, he uses the word current uh, per unit area perpendicular to the current. So that's how you have to calculate that. Uh, if the if we're thinking instead of you know we have some infinitesimal slice of volume there, where there's uh, you know uniform charge density rho for that volume, and it's moving, right? Then we can calculate J vector as equal to the charge density at that point times the velocity at that point. And once again, we can use the force is equal to, well, how much charge? Rho d tau, uh, Q V cross B. So V vector cross V vector. And we can rewrite that as, well, Rho V is just J vector. And what's left over? D tau. OK. So these are some rather simple formulas. Um, they shouldn't be hard to remember. Um, the most difficult thing to think about is that, um, oh, caveat about the surface thing. So remember back in when we did electrostatics and we had like a surface and we looked at it on edge and we go loop and it had some surface charge density sigma and we zoomed in with our super calculus microscopes and we drew a box and we said, what is the electric field at the surface? And the answer is, 
Huh. Well, the electric field up here is pointing a little bit more away. Electric field down here is pointing a little bit more away. And so if we have another electric field that we're superimposing on, then this electric field total is very big, and this one's a little bit smaller, okay, because they're adding together. And so what we have to do is take the average of the electric field to find the electric field at the surface, right? Um, so there is a discontinuity at the surface. And so really when you're doing this, um, the magnetic field, um, because current creates a magnetic field, the magnetic field at the surface, when you have moving charges, uh, also suffers a discontinuity. So you have to keep that in mind. And so this B right here, this is the average, okay? Average B. Because the B above and the B below is slightly larger and smaller than whatever B you're already in. So, hope that helps. Okay, example four is next. Um, and be sure to like and share this with your friends. Bye.